Welcome to Indiana Sports Beat Radio, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni! Fires upfield into the end zone, and it's caught! Jelani Woods! Touchdown! I-N-D-Y! A 43-point night for Tyrese Halliburton! How do you like that, buddy? Galloway drives all the way to the hole, throws it up, got it! Indiana's got their first lead of this contest. It's pretty simple, I win. Google me. Now, here's your host, Jim Coyle. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome aboard another edition of Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Friday. Man, oh, man, and we've got plenty to get to, plenty to talk about, and a loaded, loaded day for you. Hope you're doing well. Don't forget Indiana Sports Beat Radio, powered by Andy Moore Honda. Just go to andymorehonda.com to get more to your door and the best in new and used vehicles. And, of course, free think for all the years, all your printing needs. Whether it's two dozen t-shirts for your upcoming family reunion or 200 for this season's recreational softball league. Go to freethinkapparel.com today and get printing. Man, oh man, we have got a loaded show. Thanks a lot for being with us. Bob Kravitz from bobkravitz.com will join us. Kyle Macy with Westwood One Radio Network, uh, former national champion and uh, Peru, Indiana native. Will join us as well. Zach Osterman from the Indy Star. Casey Bartley from Boiler Upload as the Purdue gets ready to uh, take their spin on the magic wheel tonight. And former director of media relations at Indiana for men's basketball, J.D. Campbell, will join us as we'll talk about all kinds of things the NCAA uh, is looking at as well. And, uh, man, it is a loaded day, loaded show. And last night was a, a great night of college basketball. Man, I had fun watching those games. Three great games and one absolute blowout uh, by your odds-on national favorite to win the national championship. Hello to everybody hitting us up on the Andy Moore Honda hotline as well. Fred, Brian, down in Ellerton, Florida today. Bob down in Georgetown, Indiana. Appreciate you as always. Uh, John W. from Southern Brown County. A lot of Johns. John Eights from over in Southport, Tannis, jumping on. Philip, as correctly states, Illinois gets to the Elite Eight. Forrest on from down in Southern Georgia. Donald, uh, former Southern Indiana guy down in Atlanta now. Dr. Drew, how are you, sir? Um, yes, uh, pointing out the uh, from a few days ago, Indiana picking up their first recruit of the season. And uh, 2024 McDonald's All-American, uh, Bryson Tucker. We'll talk about uh, what Indiana's looking at. Brian says that Illinois won shooting, though they won shooting 50% from the free throw line. Yeah, that was looking like that was going to be a mess. We'll talk about that. Five lefts. How are you, sir? Tony on from Owensboro. Larry, Las Vegas. Larry is with us, as always, rolling the dice. Tannis. Gritty, um, Dave, couple of David, David and, and Derek, rather, Michael, how are you, sir? Land of the legend, Larry Bird down in French Lick. But, uh, man, plenty to talk about. I, uh, boy, those games last night, three of the four were just awesome, uh, fun. And I think that that's how it's going to be for the most part. Uh, you're down to the nitty gritty now. Uh, there are no easy games anymore. And not to say that any of them are quote unquote easy per se, but there are no more uh, people that are there. They earned their way to this level. They have won and beaten other teams to get to where they are. Up on the docket tonight, we've got a whole nother slate that we'll talk about. Purdue taking on Gonzaga, North Carolina State versus Marquette. Duke takes on Houston and Creighton versus Tennessee tonight. We'll talk about all of those upcoming games. But last night, other than UConn, who absolutely decimated, decimated the team that they played in the national championship game last night, they beat them by 30. San Diego State 
And this was a four-point game with like a minute to go before the half. And UConn was able to, to, to squeeze that out to, to a nine-point nine point bulge at the halftime. But the second half was a completely different story. As they just blow out San Diego State, winning that game by 30. The big question there, who's going to stop the juggernaut? That, that is UConn. I don't know, but uh, we'll have fun talking about it today. But, man, those other games were just a, a blast to watch. You've got Alabama upsetting North Carolina, and this was a wild game because I think the halftime score was like 54 to 49 or something like that. Uh, I need to pull up the box score uh, in that game if I can quickly because I want to make sure that, the, yeah, let me see. 54 to 46 was the halftime score. And I'm like, they're going to score 190 points in this game. The second half, Alabama limits North Carolina to just 33 points. They hold them to 21 points less in the second half. And that was the difference. And uh, as the Crimson Tide, Number four seeded were able to upset North number one North Carolina, eighty nine eighty seven, and uh, were they the first number one seed to go down? There's too too many numbers. Uh, that yes, they were because um, you come one last night and then tonight we have you play Purdue playing. Yeah, there you go. And but man, I I, I was like, here we go again. They're going to let North Carolina score a thousand points and. Big difference in that second half, as I said. Shut them down. 54 first half points for the Tar Heels, 33 in the second half, but a very, very balanced game for Alabama as they score 46 and 43. And, whoo, Alabama's for real, people. I don't think that that. Both the one and the two seeds from the West region have been eliminated. So either a four or a six seed will go to the final four from that region. Which Clemson or Alabama. Still, and oh, that's yeah, not, that's not out of the ordinary completely. No. Right. Which, especially compared to what we've had here of late. Oh, yeah. Um, like we don't have any Florida Atlantics this year. No. And the we, we did have a San Diego State, and they got wiped from the planet. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I mean, wiped from the planet. Uh, I'm telling you, UConn, uh, I, I feel like most of us have been saying this all year long. UConn is... Even though they are beatable, I don't see anybody stopping them right now. And and maybe well, it's because they don't – maybe it was because in their league they don't always play the toughest of teams. But, I mean, they look like they're going to be hard to beat. We'll see. Uh, and plenty to talk about in regards to why you're recruiting as well. We'll continue to get up to date with that. But, I, you know, I've said this before, and I I'll say it again. And, and when Casey comes on with us, this is not about Purdue or anybody else. And I haven't gone through the other teams, but the reason I say Purdue cannot win a national, will not win this national championship is because of, uh, I was answering, uh, someone had asked a, a question on uh, YouTube. It was a comment one day. And so I, it led me to do some research and research back through the last five national champions have had at least a minimum of four NBA draft picks on their rosters. And guess what? UConn, although they lost three, three starters who are currently playing in the NBA to last year, they're back to do it again. They they reload, and that, that's incredible there. I mean, you, there's no way that – Dan Hurley is not everybody's coach of the year because a you're about to do something that hasn't been done in 20 years. Um, B you're going to do it with a different, completely different manner. When, when Florida did it last, when Duke did it before that 10 years before that, they had the same guys Hurley and, and Leitner uh, on the Duke's team. And then, uh, man, I can't think of the daggone Florida guys right now, but 
They were on both of those teams. This is a big, big difference. And I got to tell you, that's one of the most impressive things that will have happened in college basketball in 50 years. Who knows? I mean, it's crazy. Uh, do you think this might be a bit of a stretch, but do you think we could potentially be on the verge of a UConn mini dynasty, if you will? I'm not saying they're going to keep winning title after title because it's really hard to do, but we can't say that's out of the question, potentially. Um, no, but they've already put themselves, they're about to put themselves in a different realm. Oh, yeah. Um, and you I don't think, know I how we, to, we, okay, I don't know how to classify know. them. I know because, because we, we, we've, we've, we, last year we called them new bloods. And I think that was right. rightfully so. That doesn't mean that they're, that's just a different variation of a blue blood. You are still a blue blood. You just, most of your success has come in the last 25, 30 years. But yeah, money, when you're one money. Of the top four national title havers, it's almost by default you have to be a blue blood. Yeah. Especially when uh, you keep doing it and you've done it with three different coaches. Yeah, it's my mock. It's better than what Duke has. I mean, Duke has plenty of titles, but they're all under Shashevsky. Now, exactly. And nothing happened with Duke until Shashevsky got there. Yes. Um, that that differentiates Indiana from Duke. Indiana had two titles before Bob Knight arrived, and Bob Knight won three titles. Uh, Indiana's been back to uh, another Final Four. Uh, since then with a different coach. So Indiana has been to final fours with three different coaches. That's, that's a reason again, why I don't care what anybody says. Indiana still is a blue blood. I don't, it, it because they haven't won the national championship in, in, in a long time. Well, then what then? Yeah. I, I, don't, I might even get into that discussion today, but here's something about UConn. Um, this is 2024 and was it, I'm trying to think back. They won the men's and the women's the same year twice. I think that it was in either 04 or 14 that they did that. And I believe before four it might be the case. Yeah, it, I, it was. It might have been the year they had Kimball Walker, but that was 2011, I believe. Well, they've done it two other times. Maybe it was 11 That's, and 14. Well, they've done it in. I think they did it in 94. I'm saying that because the numbers, 94, 04, 2024. Oh yeah. Um, it is a and UConn on the women's side is kind of. They're raising up, up here. and so they're 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 a legitimate contender for the women's national championship, with one exception. This year's UConn on the women's side is South Carolina. Uh, they were upset last year and and shockingly did not win it, but this year they are looked to be the juggernaut. But uh, Gene Ar Ariema, it wasn't in 2014. Both UConn men and women won the national title. Okay. So, and then prior to that, I think it was 94. 94. So in 95, the women of UConn won the national title. I don't have the men in front of me, but let me see what I can look at real quick. Well, I, I would go to the men first because the women. I already, already, well, I already had the women in front of me. That's why I was trying to pull up. But this would, if, if they were able to pull that off, that would be the third time. Uh, nuts. In 95, let's see. No, the, in 95, UConn men went to the Elite Eight. So no, 94, it's 94. It's the same numbers. 94. I, I know, but I'm looking at both of those seasons. Oh. And th between all four seasons, there was only one national title winner, and that was the women in 95. Okay, then, um, then look at 04. Let's see. 04, 04 they won the national title. The win the men did. Let me go back to the women at this point and see what dun, we got dun, here. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe on to something here. Uh, UConn women in 04 won the national title. There you go. All right. So UConn men and women win it together in 2004. 04. 
They win it both win it again in 2014. And now we're in 2024. And the men are the runaway favorites to win it. And the women are not the favorites, but they are definitely in the conversation. Uh, Gino Ari, uh, Ariema made a statement the other day that there's no doubt in his mind that Paige Buchers is the best player in women's basketball today. A little shot over the bow um, towards Caitlin, not towards Caitlin Clark, but just supporting his player. But that's that's just a cool stat uh, to to look at. Um, Indiana women play that South Carolina team tonight at seven, I think seven ish. Uh, it's not at seven. It's like seven twenty-five, whatever the stagger time is, but that game, uh, and as much as you'd certainly like to see the local team, Indiana do well, who, um, man, I, I, uh, I don't, think that they have uh that would be the biggest upset this season in basketball in my mind uh without question but it's time to take a break because up next the great one bob kravitz from bobkravitz.com because i know each and every one of you have already subscribed there if not you're missing out let's bring him in right after this break brought to you by our good friends from Andy Moore Honda back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. In the market. Good day, is Robert. That, is that Good a shaven day. Bob Kravitz? At least a partial partially shaven? No. Yeah, no. I uh I went to my lady last uh, yesterday and does my hair. And I said, what should I do with this? And she said, we need to shave it down. So she uh, she shaved it close, and I like it. I think you should get some, um, what's that stuff called? Uh, just just for, for men. men? Just for men. Just for men. Yeah, go yeah. all in. Just, and, 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 then, and I think every time you come on, you should have like a little cigar stogie. <laughs> yeah. Call it I'll just for Bob instead of just for men. Yeah, and just, the fedora. I've got a fedora that if you don't have one, that would. Oh, oh yeah. He's ready to pull it oh, out. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, you're doing the segment in the fedora today, Bob. That is with, that's with it. a sweatshirt. Fedora to sweatshirt. <laughs> I don't even know what I don't even know where I got this. I just got it. Jim, go get your you fedora. Know, we need a seg segment with the fedoras. <laughs> It's Fedora Friday on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. <laughs> excuse me. You're excuse Bob, what do you think about Pat Kelsey at Louisville? You think that'll work? Yeah, I, I'm glad he took the job because he's he's backed out of a couple of jobs the last. Second. I know that that's a pretty wild thing that he did. Yeah. I think it was. I don't remember which school it was, but he he sh he he backed out 25 minutes before his press before conference. The press conference, I know. He pulled the McDaniels. Now, should I do the fedora? I like that. Yeah. Or pork pie hat. Say oh, my oh, name. Oh. Say my name. I think fedora because then you can say it's Fedora Friday when you come back. All right. Say my name. <laughs> John doesn't know what that is, do you, John? I don't know what that is. No. Oh, you got no excuse for this one. This is not about age here. Is it not? Say my name. That's uh Heisenberg. You don't know who Heisenberg is? No. You mean from Oppenheimer? No, man, from Breaking Bad. Oh, from Breaking See, Kravis Bad. doesn't even know what I'm talking what you're talking no, about. No, I, I wasn't sure. Breaking Bad. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I've only seen a couple of Breaking Bads. Are you? All right, here we go, guys. Upshot <laughs> Market and Table has the largest selection of in-house made products around and everything you need to make a gourmet meal at home. Or pick out a tomahawk steak or a grouper filet and enjoy it cooked to perfection in Chop Shop Steakhouse. 
Chop Shop, Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by the Chop Shop, home of the Indiana football and men's basketball coaches shows. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio, on this Fedora Friday, baby. Fedora Friday. The great one, Bob Kravitz from bobkravitz.com, which I know each and every one of you are, are subscribed to. If not, you're missing out on incredible content, whether it's about Indiana, Purdue, uh, the Pacers, the Colts, whatever, or, and sports in general. It's all there, baby. And But right now, it's NCAA basketball uh, for Bob, and with good reason. You Tonight, you have the Purdue Boilermakers that are still trying to vanquish the ghosts of uh, seasons past, not been to a Final Four in 43 years, 44, whatever 44. it is actually yeah. now. Yeah, uh, which years. is a long, long time. Uh, and it's nut cutting time at the NCAA, Bob. Last night's games, three of the four were just incredibly fun to watch. Uh, minus one, UConn just, uh, since we're wearing the fedoras, man, they just pulled an Al Capone. And it was like the St. Valentine's Day massacre in the second half against uh, San Diego State. Uh, just mind-boggling. They scored 52 points total in a game, and UConn scored 42 in the second half. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, they they don't look like they're going to lose to anybody, and they maybe the Raptors, maybe the Rap, maybe. Uh, they did this last year. You know, I mean, uh, they they are they're a special team, but. I just think in the end it's going to be the two teams that separated themselves from the field during the course of the regular season. That's Purdue and UConn. Uh, I would be shocked if that's not our final uh, in, in next weekend. Say that again. Who who do you – the final? U, UConn and Purdue. Really? Yeah. Um, I did get a feeling last night that I, I wonder, is Purdue the only team that – could possibly beat UConn, and that's because – not because I think Purdue is is so unbeatable, but because they have the unusual in Zach Eady. Right. Uh, he is a – he's a different animal, and it, it just changes things. But UConn is so stinking good at so many different places with so many different weapons. And they got a and- center. They got that Clinton kid yes. who, who, who's very, who's very good. And, uh, you know, he can, he can score from the perimeter a little bit. He can take Zach outside, uh, which Zach doesn't want to do, uh, which he's not going to do. Um, so yeah, I think that's the matchup, but it's going to be interesting tonight. I'm getting ready. Um, I was just packing actually when, uh, uh get before I, we made the call here. Um, I'm going to head on, uh, up to Detroit, but Gonzaga has played lights out for the last month and a half, two months, I believe, and don't quote me, I believe they've won 16 out of 18. Um, uh, this is a team that early in the season, you wondered if they were going to keep that streak going of sweet 16s, uh, you know, and, and man, they, they look great against McNeese. And they clobbered Kansas, absolutely clobbered them. Yeah, and um, Mark Few, and I've said this a couple times this week, Bob, but you weren't with us, so I'll repeat it. The one, Mark Few said something uh, in regards to, in uh, what was it, 2019, that they played for the national championship last when they lost to right. uh, Baylor. He, he said that he wished that they had played Baylor earlier in the year so he had had a, a better understanding of their physicality of that team. They were brawny guys. They did play Purdue this year, so they have an understanding of Zach Eady and what they're going to have to deal with. The rest of their team is 
some good fill-ins, but it's not like you've got UConn or something like that where you have multiple NBA draft picks out there. Right. Uh, but having had played them, I, I think that's going to give Gonzaga the best shot that they have. I agree. To, for a game plan to, to beat Purdue. Well, they, they had the lead, if I remember correctly, this is many months ago, but they had the lead on Purdue at halftime. And if memory serves, they shot awful from three. You know, if, if they if they shoot even decent from three point from the three point arc, they probably, you know, compete or or even win that game. You, you might look it up, but I, they they were terrible from three. <clears throat> Yeah, that was a game that only ended up being a 10-point win for Purdue. Uh, and it was a five-point game at the half with uh, Gonzaga leading the right. Boilers by five. Check, and, check but, out the three-point shooting. I think they, they were horrible. Uh, let's see. Field goal percentage, 37. Three-point, yeah, 18%. 18. Uh, so, yeah, so I mean, if they, if they 14 shoot. 14 turnovers on top of that. <clears throat> right, right. So Gonzaga was not Gonzaga at that point. They were just sort of feeling their way through the thing. And, uh, you know, Purdue's been on top of its game pretty much all year. Well, nothing has changed. No. Edie, Edie is what Edie is. And you've got a, a supporting cast that is pretty decent. You've got a Braden Smith who can who can hurt you. Uh, and sometimes he can have an off night. The supporting, the other rest of the supporting cast has been okay. Uh, it's been good enough. Uh, different from say a UConn that has guys that can just go off on you because you've got so many different, so much talent around you. But this was a game that was tight. I mean, the rebounds, the previous Gonzaga game with uh, Purdue rebounds were even, uh, and if it hadn't been for the three point shooting, that may have been a different outcome. No, I, I'll tell you what. If I was, if I was a bet, I don't know what. What is the line tonight? Do you happen to know? I do is? not, but John probably does. Let me see. I have it right in front, or I did have it right in front of me. Go right back over to the games. Purdue is currently not- a five and a half point favorite over Gonzaga. Well, I, I think I like. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think. What would I do? What would Bob do? I would take per, uh, Gonzaga because uh, otherwise you're betting with everybody else. Um, and <coughs> I just think that P- Purdue has not been pushed yet either. No. They've not played anyone that is that has had anything for them. They played uh, a, a hor- woefully overmatched uh, grambling team, and Utah State just did not have anything as well. You get to this they level. They made them look that way. They, those yes. are pretty, I mean, Utah State won uh, a conference that, that put six teams in the NCAA tournament. So Utah State wasn't as bad as they just happened to look against Purdue. I think Purdue deserves all the credit in the world for making Utah State look that inept. Uh, Loading thinks uh, the Zags win by seven. Wow. That's uh, – that's some confidence there. Um, we'll see about that. But uh, last you know, night, the great yeah, games good. were great. Did you watch all four games last night? I kept falling asleep. That's how old I am. Dude, I was worried that I was going to fall asleep during uh, the the final game uh, of – what was the last game? Uh, I think it was uh, North Carolina. No, that was earlier. Uh there, uh, there's a game late. Illinois, uh, Illinois, Iowa State. State. I watched part of it the whole night. My wife, I'm on the couch and I keep zonking out. My wife's like, "Don't you need to watch this? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this oh. your job? Uh, shut up, leave me alone." If the if Purdue is able to get past Gonzaga tonight, that will put two Big Ten teams in the Elite Eight, the two best teams uh, all season in the Big Ten. Uh, that you know we we do that all year long with Illinois, but Illinois, Terrence Shannon, what he is he the best individual player Probably. in the tournament left in the tournament right I, now? I think that he is. I think that he is. He's not the most dominant. That would be Edie, right? But, but as far as far as 
if you're looking at guys who have a chance to be special at the next level, uh, Terrence Shannon is the guy. It, it's it's a little bit of a nightmare for the NCAA. You've got this guy yes. playing who's got this cloud over his head um, for allegedly uh, doing really heinous things. So we we don't we don't know, and I don't know all the the details of his situation, but that's a tough look for for college basketball that you may be uh, handing the championship trophy at some point to uh, a guy with, with his baggage, but well, at the same time, uh, he's innocent until proven guilty. And and how many, and how many teams uh, have there been in the past that, that, you know, we're probably cheating a lot, but speaking of Terry Shannon jr. He's averaging more points. Uh, for the Illini at, at over 24 points per game than any former Illini player since the 70s. Wow. I Jeez. mean, they've had some good guys come through there yeah. uh, and some good teams, but that's that's saying something. You, you've got um, Clemson making their first Elite Eight in, what, 43 years. Yeah. Uh, there's some cool things happening and most importantly, Bob, we're seeing a lot of chalk now, uh, more so than we've seen in a long time. Yeah, I mean, last year was kind of an, an, an anomaly, easy for me to say. When you had San Diego State and FAU and uh, all these all these uh, lower seeded teams, that was an anomaly. Usually, you know, the early rounds you see a couple of upsets here and there. And then it starts to go chalk, and that's what we're starting to see. Although Clemson, Clemson uh, put a little dent in that last night. And I think that this is what we're going to start seeing in the future. And here's why I say that, although with a little bit of some wiggle room, but because of the transfer portal, these teams are going to continue to get better. They're going to take the good that they have, and they're going to continue keep adding to it. Uh, if you have a, a team like UConn who wins a national championship, turns around, loses three starters to the NBA, 75% of their scoring reloads and comes right back, man. But, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the stat that I gave, I don't know, were you on when I mentioned this, that the last five national champions have had a minimum of four NBA draft picks on them. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, it, it, it does not surprise me in the least. I that mean, eliminates Purdue from the conversation. Well, I mean, I, look, I obviously Edie's going to be a draft pick. I, you know, I think Braden has a chance to be somewhere playing professional basketball, whether that's the NBA or not. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't think I, so. I, I'll tell you who on that team I think has a chance to play in the NBA. Cam Heidi. Hey, he's done a hell of a job he, coming out of nowhere. He, he is a superior athlete. He does things that nobody else in this team can do. So uh, once he starts getting playing time and sh- starts to show that he's got a well-rounded game, that's a guy that, <clears throat> you know, who I, I think has the requisite a- athleticism to play in the league. Yep. Hey, uh, you can stick around for the next segment if you like. We've got Kyle Macy coming. You don't have to, of course. Well, I got I got to pack and get going to uh, Detroit. Detroit. Detroit Bat- Rock City. Detroit Rock City, the Motor City. Uh, by the way, uh, l- let me let me ask your uh, your your twelve listeners here. What do you think of this? And That's he's crazy. for those of you listening on radio, scratching his scratchy. Uh, old, um, my beard, experienced man beard. Experience my man beard. beard. My 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 lady said, "Yeah, I'll give you a GQ beard." I'm like, "What the hell is that?" She says, "You look like you're being GQ." Well, sp- see now, if you'd had that fedora on when you went in there, it would have been a whole different setup, man. She may have really set you up. She probably would have made me bald, which I I pretty much am anyway. Hey, all good. So, all right, tonight's games. Purdue, you picking him to win? I'm picking Purdue to get to the final four. All right. So you got Purdue to the final four. Then tonight, uh, the other games, Duke, Houston, 
Man, that that could be, that a, could be game. a hell of a game. Well, I I always root against Kelvin Sampson, so I'll take the Dukies, and uh, I got South Carolina in the in the, on the women's side. The women's side is really fascinating this year. Yeah, you've got uh, South Carolina, Iowa. Uh, um, who am I leaving out? Uh, oh, again, uh, uh, UConn. UConn, LSU. Here's another star, a quick stat for you before I let you go, and we okay. gotta go and get to Kyle. Um, UConn men's and women's won the tournament in 2004. UConn men's and women's went uh, won the tournament in 2014. UConn men, the highly runaway favorite to win it in 2024, and the UConn women are wow. in the conversation. It's amazing to me because if you've ever been to Yukon in stores, Connecticut, nothing, not, nothing. Yeah. No, there's nothing there. That's what's so amazing about them being a part of this conversation. I don't call them a blue blood. I call them a, a new blood because everything they've done, what they've done is amazing, yes. but it's all it's happened in the last, last five years. 30 years. Yeah. yeah it's no. crazy. Yeah. All right. Bob is heading up to Detroit Rock City, people. Make sure you give him a follow. Appreciate you, sir. Safe travels. Thank you, buddy. Take, Take care the fedora yourself. with you. I will. You'll need it in Detroit. Uh, I need to just cover up this lack of hair. Yeah. Appreciate you, my friend. See you, man. We've got lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports B Radio. Kyle Macy. Uh, from Westwood One Radio now and formal national champion, Peru, Indiana native, uh, won a title with the Wildcats back in 78. We're back with that and much more here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. If you're looking for a whole... All right, I'll let him know we're ready for him. <clears throat> Say my name. Look up Heisenberg. How do you even spell that? A-T-I-S-E-N. <laughs> Heisenberg. Breaking bad. Okay. I've, I know Breaking Bad. I've never seen it. I've seen a couple of episodes, but I've not watched all the way through. Oh, is he the main guy? Yeah. I didn't know that was his name. That's right. Yeah. Is is that where uh is that the same show with Los Pollos Hermanos or is that Yes, Los Pollos Hermanos? Mr. Frain, Mr. Frain from Los Pollos Hermanos. <laughs> you know what that means, right? Some about the, chicken. The, the chicken brothers. I like that. <clears throat> Maybe you, you may want to send a Kyle a text. You just let him know we're ready for him. I'd send him one, but never uh, double down, I'm sure. Ready, whatever you are, sir. Make sure I, s I did send his email. But I want to make sure I sent the email to the correct address. Because you never know. Mistakes happen. Hopefully you received the link in your email, period. Yep, I sent it to the correct email, so he should have it. Did you tell him that we're doing it by link? Y yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just Sometimes people don't make the connection. Yeah, yeah. See, even Fozon watched Breaking Bad all the way around the world. And well, it's not that I didn't. So here's the thing. When Breaking Bad was popular, I wasn't. I don't want to say I wasn't old enough. I just didn't care. It's one of those shows that I'll eventually have to get back to is what it is. Dude, it's one. it, it might be the best show ever on TV. My grandpa, uh, and who, he may, may not be watching right now. He, he, he loves the show. He told well, me. Well, hey, Grandpa. Watch. What's your grandpa's name? His name's Phil. Grandpa Phil, how are you, sir? <clears throat> we appreciate he may or may not be listening, on. but if he is, then shout out to him. I know Grandpa he Phil, I, I hope you are, and you can give uh, grandson John some education in great <laughs> movies and whatever else it is that I give you uh, flack over. 
for not knowing. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Ten seconds. Hopefully, Kyle joins us. APR financing for 36 months on a 2023 Honda Ridge line. Go to anymorehonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Remax Advanced Realty, Indie Home Pros team by Cheryl Sizemore. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Hey, hey, welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Friday. And, uh, Lots going on. Yeah, it's mostly basketball. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have to tell you that. You already know it. And speaking of basketball, here's one joining us now. Kyle Macy, the Peru, Indiana native, national champion with the, the Wildcats of Kentucky back in 78. Uh, and <coughs> Kyle, thank you, first of all, for taking the time to join us. I know you're busy with all your duties and whatnot and traveling. And But uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah, I'm out Absolutely. in Hutchinson, Kansas for the National Junior College Championship game on Saturday night. Or Man, I, I'm surprised that's not being held in Indiana because the Division Three National Championship was in, uh, I think, Evansville. The Divi- No, that was up in Fort Wayne. The Division Two Championship was down in Evansville. Uh, Indianapolis was a site. You've got the women's NIT, or, uh, women's and men's NIT at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Uh, up as well. Did you play ever get to play in the Hinkle when you were in high school? Uh, not in high school, but when I was with the Pacers, that's where we always practiced. Really? Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, I did not know that. Very, very cool. How long were you with the Indiana Pacers? I was just there for one year. Yeah. How special was that for you being an Indiana native when you're coming out of Peru? Um, yeah, it's always fun to go back to your home state and play, although I didn't really get much opportunity to get on the court, so that didn't make it as fun as it could have been. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so um, we made the playoffs and whatever, didn't do real well. But, uh, it, you know, it was, it was a fun year to be cl- that close to home. My parents got to come to a lot of games, those type of things. So it was fun. And, and people only understand, you, you come off of a, a national championship team uh, in which you beat Duke uh, and – Man, how, I wonder how how long had Mike Shashevsky been the coach at that time? Well, Bill Foster was the coach. It was oh, the- he was not the coach yet. Okay, that's right. 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 Um, that transition was a year or two away, I think, before uh, Krzyzewski came in. That winning a national championship in college is what we're looking at going on right now. That that had to be uh, one of the highlights of your life, obviously. Yeah, I mean, anytime you play a team sport, that's the ultimate goal to win a championship. And uh, the way that team really came together and, and uh, was able to accomplish the goal, because really the number one seed from the start of the season through most of the year, and then to come away with the championship, it just kind of, uh, you know, that that's that's what you're playing for, really. It's, it's not an individual game. It's a team game. And so for your team to win a championship um, – yeah, it, it was – and for me, after going through some hardships, having to transfer, sit out a year, and be able to step in and play and, and lead the team uh, made it even that much more special. And I don't remember exactly now how long this run lasted. And I think it might have started in like 73. But there was a team from either Indiana or Kentucky in the final four – for a stretch of like 11, 12, 13 years. I mean, Indiana went in uh, 73, I know. You had Kentucky going, and Louisville was was in that mix. Uh, you know, then Indiana again, and it just went back and forth. You had Indiana State in it. Uh, it just wild to, for those two states to have such a long stretch of a team in the Final Four for a, nearly a – for over a decade. A lot of good basketball in that area. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of like to think that the high school basketball in Indiana is, uh, you know, one of the best in the country. And and then college basketball, obviously, with Indiana and Kentucky both uh, at that time, uh, really always high, highly ranked and playing so well. I mean, the Indiana undefeated team, uh, Kentucky knocked off to Indiana the, the one year when they would have been maybe two years in a row undefeated uh, to go to the Final Four, which ended up playing UCLA in John Woods' last game in 75 and those uh, freshmen on that team then were seniors in 78 when we won the championship 
And of course, if we can stretch it out there because of course, John Wooden from Martinsville, Indiana. So, uh, the, 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 the deal just continues. I don't, I don't know that people really realize the, the fabric, how, how woven it really, really is. They think that people from, uh, in this area just brag about it, it but it, it's a, it was a true fact. It is a true fact. Yeah. I mean, if you go back and look at the history books and the players and those type of things, but, um, you know, I, I think it was just, it's such a big part of the community. It, it meant something to, you know, make the basketball team or the coach had a, a really a high character in the community and, uh, was well thought of. Um, I don't know. I've not been around Indiana high school as much, obviously, since I live in Kentucky now, but when they went to the class system, that may have changed a little bit. Uh, it makes it a little tougher because, you know, it was such a unique situation where when you play your sectionals in high school in Indiana that, you know, you've got eight teams or so all within 20 miles of each other. And now the teams may have to travel an hour, hour and a half just to play a game in a sectional. So it's a little bit different. The crowds, I don't think, are quite as big. Uh, but, you know, the reason I guess they win is more uh, players get to experience a state championship or whatever. So. And I know that uh, with your duties, with family, with living, uh, not living here, how often do you even get to get back to uh, Indiana, whether it's to Peru or when I saw you in Bloomington a, a month or so ago? Yeah, um, I try to get up to Indi my, my, I have a brother still living up around the Peru area in Converse. So I'll get up, visit him. I go up uh, for a week each summer, start of the summer. Uh, my high school tennis coach is still coaching tennis in Peru, and I'll go up for a week. And my gosh. Camp. Yeah. And uh, so I get up there. My parents, unfortunately, have passed, so, uh, you know, don't go up and visit them, obviously. I can go to the, web, the cemetery maybe when I'm visiting my brother. But, um, you know, so not as much as I used to, but still get up there some, obviously. How good was the tennis career? Man, those big lanky arms, I'm sure they they uh, served you well. I, I was okay. I mean, I think they said I don't don't know if they had ranking systems back then, but I, someone said I was maybe one of the top four in the state my senior year. So, yeah, we see that a lot, uh, yeah. especially with crossover athletes because great athletes are just great athletes, and it kind of, especially at the lower level, it transcends a lot of things because you're just you're naturally better than other guys and everything. So, but how fun was it being able to play and be so good at a sport, not named basketball? <laughs> well, th the great thing about tennis and basketball, the crossovers is, is wonderful. I mean, your footwork, your eye hand coordination and all those things really help with each sport. And uh, I mean, I, I played baseball as well through high school and American Legion. So um, it kind of depends, you know, growing up as, uh, whatever season it is, that's the sport you're playing. <laughs> and it just worked out that I was probably better at basketball and, uh, you know, pursued that. I kind of got away from tennis in college, obviously. Uh, although I did play my freshman year at Purdue in doubles after the basketball season was over. Uh, but then when I, I stopped playing professionally, I came back and, you know, you, you still have those competitive juices. So um, to this day, I still play some uh, age group tournaments, uh, national stuff. And I think the highest I got in uh, my age group was maybe nationally it was number 45 in the country. So, And a lot of people might not know this, but you played under your dad at Peru. That had to also be very special for you. Or, yeah. and, and taxing at the same time. You know, it, it really wasn't. Um, we had a real good relationship. It, it was a great uh, opportunity for me to play. And that's why he took the Peru job. He'd been a college coach in Fort Wayne. And that's really where I grew up at Indiana Tech. And, um, but yeah, I, I got to play for him for three years. And, um, I, I think if you're a son of a coach, you, you either have to be the best player on the team or the worst player on the team. I think if you're in the middle, that's <laughs> problems. So, but no, we had a real good relationship, <laughs> take things home and talk about them. And, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, 1975, Mr. Basketball, Indiana, Mr. Basketball. <clears throat> and I say this all the time. That is is that has to be one of the highest uh, high school awards that there are in the United States. Period. Uh, Indiana Mister Basketball is just it is what it is, and it is uh, it, it's 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 something that's way up there. And I'm and I'm I'm sure that's something you still cherish. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a special honor to be named Mr. Basketball of the state. Um, but I think it's not just an individual honor. The way I looked at it, I mean, I had a lot of real good teammates that maybe made that extra pass to give me an open shot that were my scoring average was pretty high. Uh, you know, the, we had a, a newspaper man that uh, did a lot of coverage of our team. That ob obviously helps get the publicity out there. So there's a lot of factors, I think, that come into play. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a great honor, and, you know, you, you carry that title with you the rest of your life. But when you look at the list of uh, former Mr. Basketballs, I think that's really what makes it even that much more special. And for those that don't know your complete story, it's, it's vast, uh, we've been talking about just, we could stop after all the accolades we've already talked about, but that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. And many people probably don't know you actually started your college career at <clears throat> Purdue. Yeah, I did. Um, came down really recruiting wars with uh, Purdue and Kentucky. And I was real late deciding it was into May, you know, none of the signing when you're in eighth grade, like they do nowadays sometimes, uh, so I was late deciding, and, and Kentucky kind of gave me an ultimatum, said, hey, we need to sign one more guard, and we've got a guard ready to sign, but we, we would sign you first if you're ready. Well, I wasn't. So they went ahead and signed uh, Truman Clater, who I ended up playing with for two years You know, after I transferred down. But I think I probably felt a little pressure to stay in state and Purdue being just an hour away from Peru. Um, so went there my freshman year. Uh, and then what led to the transfer to Kentucky? Um. A lot of things. I think you just probably the the major factor was just a lack of discipline on the team from the coach. Uh, guys, we had a lot of talent, but just guys kind of came and went and did whatever they wanted to do. And so we were never going to be as good as we could have been. Um, I, I wasn't really getting to play until about the fourth game when Bruce Parkinson broke his wrist. And that kind of put me into the starting lineup. And I had a lot of success. I think I had 38 in my first Big Ten game. Uh, a couple other games in the 20s, whatever. So, you know, once you play and you kind of taste that, you don't want to go back to the bench. And Bruce redshirted after that uh, wrist injury and was coming back the next year. So um, I, I probably would have been renegated back to the bench, uh, I guess. I didn't want to take that chance after having played and had success. So I looked to transfer. And, and at Kentucky, you guys had a damn good team. I mean, uh, <laughs> Goose Givens, Rick Roby, uh, I, I can't remember them all by name right now, but, uh, I do, I was a kid and, and I remember that was really when I first started paying attention to college basketball and knowing those names. And I remember my grandmother was a, uh, Kentucky fan. She grew up in Louisville and so <laughs> had that damn rug that uh, they used to have with the cats on it and all that stuff. Uh, so it's funny. I look back and laugh now, but, uh, and she was a Kentucky Colonel boy. She was just all proud of all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, but that was, that was a hell of a team that you, that, that Kentucky had in 78. Yeah, it probably is, uh, kind of underrated and through the history books of the successful national championship teams, because one of the reasons I think the following year is when ESPN kicked in. And so we didn't have the coverage, you know, uh, in fact, I think they may have even lost the film of the final game against Duke, whoever was the sponsor. I'd heard that story. I'm not sure if that's true or not to get, you know, highlights. You can't really go back and look at it. But um, with Mike Phillips and Rick Robin inside, both 6'10", uh, both kind of complemented each other. Roby could really run well and was athletic. And uh, Phillips had great touch in around the basket. Uh, both could, you know, share the ball very well. And then with Given shooting on the wing and James Lee coming in off the bench, about six six stud, you know. We forgot just, about I, him, man. Oh yeah, yeah. and then he could Truman, jump out of the gym. Yeah, and would try to every time he got the ball go to the hole and dunk. <laughs> and then uh, Truman Clater, myself, Jay Scheidler in the backcourt. Um, yeah, we were we were pretty solid. So uh, we could yeah we could fast. We could play slow and blonde bomber. Wasn't he? Uh, wasn't that yeah. his nickname? Blonde. Yes. God. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's bad when the, the the memory starts getting kicked in. Uh, <laughs> Hey, we've got to take a quick break, and I'd love to come back and talk about NCAA basketball because it's getting down to to some – last night's games were incredible, and I expect nothing less tonight. Uh, incredible except for uh, UConn's absolutely uh, yeah. domination of uh, San Diego State. But Kyle Basie, uh, the great national champion, Mr. former Mr. Basketball in Indiana with us, works for Westwood One. Are you guys doing uh, games this – Continues. Are you still at duties? 
Uh, Alexa, now you're uh, doing JUCO right now. Yeah, my duties with Westwood are over. I'm working. Uh, the game will be carried on ESPNU uh, Saturday at um, one o'clock, one o'clock Central Time. Let's take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back with more Kyle Macy here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio, brought to you by Cheryl Sizemore. Uh, for those of you in the market for home in the Indianapolis area, reach out to her, Cheryl at IndyHomePros.com. Back right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. In the market? Where did you say you were? I forgot. Right now. Hutchinson, Kansas. Hutchinson. Yeah. That's that's all. You know what? There are a ton of JUCOs out there. Yeah. It, it's a good term. Of that. With the semis were last night, and they, they're trying this year, taking today off to give them maybe a little chance to rest. <laughs> So the quality of ball will be a little bit better, but uh, there's some good players. It's now. Are they tonight? Those games tonight? No, uh, Saturday at one. Tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow. Barton plays uh, Triton in the finals. Barton well, beat Indiana Hills, Indian Hills, and uh, Barton <laughs> beat Hunter State. So, man, there is so much basketball. I don't think people realize how much is going on. I, I, when I looked and saw it, where all those. I'm like, wait a minute, you got the Division Three here, the Division Two here, the <laughs> women's NIT here, the men's NIT here. Then you got those. I'm not a fan of the CBI and the the right. CBS or whatever the the rest of them are now. The There's CIT four of them. Is the other There's one. four of them. I'm like, you don't need four stinking tournaments, man. But right. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Crazy. <clears throat> Man, how much money would you have made if uh, back in, if this was the NIL st- uh, days? <laughs> I think I'd Boy. have done it, right? <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be working now. <laughs> yeah, these guys, man, it's crazy. Yeah, it uh, is. I mean, nuts. Yeah, to think you uh, turned down a pro contract to stay in college for NIL money is <laughs> it's hard to believe. Oh, absolutely. And then you got Caitlin Clark, who just had that five million dollar offer to play in Ice Cube's Big Three tournament, um, which I'm I'm curious to see what she does. There's no way I turn that down if I'm her, <laughs> <laughs> because what's the max in WNBA that she could make? Like as salary wise, it would be like three three fifty, I think three hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, um, not very much comparatively. Yeah. She all her money is gonna come from endorsements, but buddy, a five million dollar one, that's whoo, that goes a long, long way. Some guy last night was saying that um I guess she's dating the McCaffrey kid that played. Yes, out. yeah. And he works for the Pacers. Right. And so she the don't the uh fever have the first pick? Yes. So she's I don't know. I'm hoping she's maybe. headed to Indiana. Yeah, yeah. So all right, here we go, guys. Now building exclusively south of Bloomington within the Stonecrest Golf Community. Choose from one of the gorgeous Stonecrest Signature Series house plans. We have several lots available with scenic views of the golf course. Contact Amy Rhoda with Revest Co. Real Estate for additional information. 812-583-0919 or go to MyStonecrestLiving.com. That's MyStonecrestLiving.com for more details. This segment is brought to you by The Ugly Grouper. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio, on this Friday. Thanks a lot for being with us. We have one of the uh, all time greats, uh, Kyle Macy, former uh, Peru, Indiana native, who uh, started his college career. He was former Mr. Basketball in Indiana in 1975. Started his college career at Purdue, went on to Kentucky, won a national championship, uh, played in the NBA for the Phoenix Suns and the Bulls and the Pacers, and also coached at Moorhead State. So you've done about everything there is to do, in, and now you work in the media. So I'd say you've done everything that there is possibly to do in uh, in the game of basketball, man. Hey, I even went overseas and played in Italy for three years. So that was a enjoyable <laughs> experience. <laughs> And uh, a Pan Am gold medal win winner. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, you... Coach, Coach Knight was the coach of that team. And uh, yeah, oh, was we... that the? That's right, the '79 Pan Am. 
Yeah, yeah, with the police incident. Yeah. Were you there? Were you there uh, holding the the cop back? So no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was there. Uh, yeah, I saw it all. <laughs> oh, did you really? Oh yeah, we were at practice. It, it was interesting. Um, at the end of each practice, we had an hour to practice. I think it was going into the. I don't know. Maybe we just come out of pool play, maybe. And uh, we had about an hour to practice. So Coach Knight would always take the last 15 minutes of the hour and go over scattering reports. You had your own little notebook, and you wrote down your own scattering report. It wasn't a handout sheet you just read or you know threw aside. You, you took your own notes. So we're at the end of the 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 uh, court, which is like an old uh, elementary school with a stage, like the old days, and yeah. sitting around the stage, whatever, as he's walking through stuff. And um, when we had come in, it had been pouring down rain. When we originally came into practice, they said, no, you can't come in the gym. You got to go sit back out on the bus. So we went back on the bus. So as we're practicing, I think it was the uh, Canadian women's team was coming in after us. And they came in and they got pretty loud. And Coach Knight just uh, turned to Coach Krzyzewski, who was assistant, and said, you know, go down there and ask them to be quiet. And so, <laughs> so they they quieted down for a couple minutes. Then eventually the, the level came back up pretty high. And so finally Coach said – just turned or wheeled around and said, I don't care if you're in there, just shut up. And uh, so when that happened, that's when the, the policeman came running down the court, like he was the boss in charge and, you know, coach couldn't say that. So they kind of squared off face to face and, you know, pointing fingers. And when he did, he, I guess, got coach in the eye and kind of fell back. When you did, he just, you know, instinctively that arm went up and kind of pushed away. And uh, so they arrested coach Knight right there. Fred Taylor was their general manager. And uh, it was a Catholic elementary school we were at, and he's, like, making the motion to the nun to, to use the telephone to try to find out where they're taking him and everything. And really, from then on, we didn't see Coach Knight much uh, other than at the game time. And, um, you know, we, one time we waited, like, a half hour on the bus for him to get from the courtroom to the bus to go to the gym to, to play the game. And uh, unfortunately for me, and I guess fortunately maybe for Isaiah, um, I got my jaw broke. And, and the reason I say fortunate for Isaiah, because he and coach Knight just hadn't gotten along the whole tournament. And in fact, when all that incident happened, Isaiah was already out on the bus. He'd been kicked out of practice for about the third time. <laughs> and it had been told, you might as well just transfer to DePaul. You'll never pray for me at IU and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and so when I, I got my jaw broke, we were playing Cuba. We'd beaten them by 40 in the, the uh, pool play. And it was maybe the, uh, quarterfinals or semifinal round and we were up 20 going to go to 40 again at the end of the game and just to start the second half and i don't know why they picked me but i passed to my left and turned to my right the guy hit me in the jaw and broke my mandible up here so i i was on a plane heading home the next morning uh wow. and so that's when isaiah all that stuff was kind of forgotten coach Knight really wasn't around much for practices and uh kind of the rest is history now you basketball <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, I had never heard that in, in depth uh, of that story, but it's wild. But what was it like playing for him? Did you get to enough of experience to, to truly have an understanding of what it was like playing for him? Oh, yeah. We, we were in Bloomington about a month that summer getting ready. and We took a trip to uh, Italy to play some games, to, to practice for the games. Um, I enjoyed it. I mean, I, uh, you know, as long as you did what he expected you to do and wanted you to do and gave that effort, I, I didn't have any problems with him at all. The only time he ever really got on me, um, Kevin McHale and I were, it was the end of practice. We were shooting free throws and coach Knight got sidetracked kind of by this reporter and was, was talking and we must've shot close to a half hour of free throws, which you know, I always took a lot of pride in my free throws, whatever. So after a while, I don't know if you know Kevin McHale, but he's he's got a good sense of humor. We started banking in the free throws, and Coach I bet, <laughs> caught that out of the side of his eye, I guess. And you know, that, but after thirty minutes of free throws, you you <laughs> your mind kind of bored. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> but but you know, I, he did he did something I thought was really nice, and he didn't really have to do, but I, I, it meant a lot to me that he did. Uh, two things: one, he came up to me at one of the practices and said, you know. Looking back in hindsight, he said, if I had to do it over again, I would have recruited you a lot harder because he really didn't. I mean, they had Buckner, Wilkerson, Wisman, Cruz, and they signed Bob Bender. So he didn't really recruit me that hard. And then the other thing was when we won the gold medal, he brought that gold medal down to Lexington and, and gave it to me uh, when I, you know, we still had my, my mouth wired shut. So that, that was awful nice of him. That was crazy. But it did show the talent that they had because – Terry Stotts 
was a Bloomington native, uh, an Indiana all-star in 76, uh, and did not play for Indiana. You know, he ended up at Oklahoma. Uh, but And you also had Larry Bird, who had a very brief uh, career at Indiana, about uh, weeks to a month, I think. Was Bird any good as a player? Or is he? Uh, I, I've heard rumors <laughs> that he did okay. Um, uh, but I, it gets you to think. It's like, man – he would have been on the 75 team when when uh, uh, Scott May broke his arm. Don't know if that would have made enough of a difference because they, they had beaten Kentucky by 20 that season and, but ended up losing to Kentucky in the tournament uh, like 92-90. But 77 and 78, they weren't that good, even though in 77 they still had uh, Keaton Benson. But I'm like, man, if you had Bird and Benson, I'm like, holy crap, because look what Bird did at Indiana State by himself basically. Yeah, you know it's funny. I was in uh, in Market Square Arena watching the state finals at uh, high school that year that Kentucky and Indiana uh, squared off at Dayton within a ninety two ninety game, and the score they had the score up on the the side, and most of the fans obviously were watching the scoreboard, and it was ninety ninety for the longest time, and then all of a sudden it flashed ninety two ninety final, and it was like the air was taken out of Market Square Arena. Everybody's like, ah! they, you know, they just couldn't believe that you lost. But that that was um, I'll remember that. So. But what a uh, time for college basketball! I mean, those were some great teams, and I mean, with greats on them that we still talk about today. The the fact I didn't realize that McHale was on that seventy nine team. I guess I have to go back and look. Uh, but it's wild to think that he was on that team. Uh, so again, you're looking at the genesis of how many NBA titles were on that daggone team. Yeah, it was a really good team. Um, before the professionals started playing, they said that was one of the best international teams the U.S. had ever fielded. Um, you had Mikhail, you had Mike Woodson from IU was on the team, Isaiah, obviously. Um, uh, Danny Vrains played out west at Utah. Um, John Duran from Georgetown, uh, Lester from Iowa, uh, that were the guards, myself. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it, it was a solid team, and uh, we've, we pretty much dominated the, the games. So, uh, John commenting says that uh, Kyle beat him out for Mr. Basketball in, in 1975. There were probably only about 300 or so players in between you two. So, <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations on that, John. But uh, and so now you've you've moved on to the media. How fun is that to do to to be able to stay in the game, uh, stay a part of the game, and and act and be active as you are. I enjoy it. You're right. It keeps you around the game. Uh, the thing I may enjoy the most is going in the day early and going to practices, getting to talk to the coaches, and just watch and see what teams do to prepare for for the opponents. Um, but obviously, you get good seats most of the time for the games. Uh, yeah, so it's 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 a lot of fun. I I, I worked for Kentucky's uh, network for about four years when I first stopped playing, and then uh, before I took the head coaching job at Moorhead State. And so um, that was fun, too, where you're covering one team because then you, your prep is pretty easy. You know that team so well. All you really have to prep is for the opponent. But, uh, yeah, I'm more independent worker now where I do games all over, uh, whatever I can pick up. And uh, But it, it's fun to see different styles of different parts of the country. And uh, just, you know, being a basketball fan, I'm kind of a junkie. I enjoy basketball, obviously. And the greatest series in the in the country to me, Indiana and Kentucky, which we have not had for a couple of years. But even though that hasn't happened, it doesn't matter. The uh, the rivalry has lost zero. It is just as strong during a time, at least from this side. I know I, I can see the fans. It there is no loss. It's still right there, waiting. It's like a volcano. It's just waiting to erupt, and then we have the series coming back here in another year or so. And right. which, which, as it should be, that is that's something that should always be there. The, uh, the irony here is both fan bases, probably the two most passionate fan bases in college basketball, both uh, not happy with their coaches uh, after this <laughs> season, both just lighting up the, the boards. And, uh, but both coaches coming back, Mike Woodson and John Calipari coming back next year to go at it again. I know that John has got a hell of a recruiting class coming in, but that's been part of the, the issue that he seemed to acknowledge that maybe, all right, I've got to find a mix of this youth 
and something else. Uh, and then, of course, Mike Woodson didn't have enough, didn't probably uh, have a good enough recruiting uh, system going on. Although here of late, they're really getting on that. They just landed a McDonald's All-American yesterday, day before that. But this is a great series, and I'm glad to see this coming back. Yeah, I think all the fans are. Um, you know, coaches needed to put their egos aside and get that series worked out um, because it is too – uh, the blue bloods, if you will, of college basketball, and they need to play being border states. Uh, and, and, you know, there were some great rivalry games when locations, I uh, remember the RCA dome when they like half the building was blue and the other half was red. Yes. And uh, so, that and freedom hall the same way. Right. Right. And, and uh, even, I remember, you know, Kentucky doesn't play a lot of uh, big schools at home. Uh, it doesn't seem like on their schedule. Most of those games are neutral sites. And, and, you know, that may be one reason that they struggle some in the tournament because you learn so much when you go on the road and play a team about your team, how they're going to react in hostile environments or pressure situations. And um, But I think the one thing that Kentucky fans are more upset about than anything um, is, yes, they have a young team every year. They reload every year. You have to relearn the roster every year, which is fine. But don't use that as an excuse at the end of the year when you get beat that, oh, well, we're pretty young. We're playing against 22, 23-year-olds because, you know, that's the, the route you've chosen to put your team together. Uh, and the other thing is that I think some of the Kentucky fans are a little bit tired of the, you know, we're here to change players' lives and get them in the NBA and big contracts as opposed to the goal is to win a national championship. And so we'll see if those changes are made. Yeah, there's a similar uh, situation in Indiana. The the fans, they want to see, because Indiana produces probably more talent than any other state that there is, especially per capita, uh, they want to see Indiana kids on the, on the roster. Uh, and I understand that because that's how it used to be. But there have been so many changes that I think that there's a way to do that still because ironically, through this portal, it's very possible Indiana will end up bringing a couple of guys back that are from the state of Indiana, guys like Tony Perkins, who played at Indiana, uh, at Iowa, uh, uh, Leland Walker, who played at Eastern Kentucky and Richmond. Uh, but there are different guys. But it, it's been it's going to be different, period. It's not the way it used to be. And I think that now fans are just going to have to look at, at, at best, uh, instead of the four-year group that they were used to having, it's going to be a maximum of like a two-year thing to where you might have a guy for two years, maybe, if he's not a one-and-done. You know, I, I don't really know how coaches do it nowadays with the transfer portal where, you know, you worked hard to get a kid playing better and, and improve his skills, and then if he's got a better offer, he's just going to leave because there's really no loyalty. It doesn't seem like in college basketball anymore. You know, it used to be the fans were loyal to your school and the players were loyal to your fans in your school as well. But now if they feel like they got a better deal, they're going to jump. And so you don't really know who who's coming back, who's, you know, what spots are open you need to recruit to until maybe the end of the season. It, it's got to be really tough as a head coach. Yeah, uh, re recruit, biggest recruiting issue now is retention. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, which is you recruit crazy. not only your kids, but you recruit your own kids. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely. And NIL, I asked you off uh, off air, can you imagine uh, how well, not just yourself, but uh, your teammates and many others would have done it on the, on the NIL front back in the day? <laughs> I, I think I might have had a deal or two, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, and it would have been uh, good for, for those guys. Uh, quickly, before we uh, let you go, the NCAA tournament last night, four games, Three of them just incredible, fun to watch. The other one, uh, that juggernaut, that is UConn, that is virtually everyone's favorite to win. And with good reason, they lose 75% of their offense, three starters to the NBA, and they're back to do it again, uh, unbelievably. Uh, they just obliterated San Diego State, winning by 30. Uh, then you've got four more games tonight. I don't know if Purdue is the only team that might have a chance only because they're so different than uh, everybody else. Alabama's a little different because they really rely on the three, but Purdue is different just because of Zach Eady. He's a, uh, he's an anomaly. Yeah. And that's the big question. Excuse me. <clears throat> Purdue uh, is kind of old school. Back 
basketball with the big center in the middle. You know, nowadays the game is kind of extended out on the floor. You don't see a lot of teams with that dominating big man. Um, and I guess the question always is, uh, you know, how will the guards hold up under pressure? And, uh, you know, I think they're, it's a good matchup with for Purdue with Gonzaga, but I, I think they lead into Houston next round if Houston uh, wins their game with Duke. Uh, Houston's a tough team, physical team, and they can uh, apply some pressure out on the perimeter. So that will be the game, uh, maybe the, the real uh, contest. But, you know, the way Connecticut's playing, I mean, it's, it is basically who's playing for second, third, because <laughs> they're, they're dominating. I mean, they're big, they're fast, they shoot well, they're well coached, they play defense. Uh, and that's been the key for Alabama. They've always been able to score. But now they decided maybe to try to play a little bit of defense. And if they do, then they've got a chance against some of these teams. Terrence Shannon Jr. for Illinois last night. They win uh, a big game over Iowa State. The number one offense against the number two de- or number one defense last night. Uh, Illinois winning that battle. Now they'll go against UConn, the top two offenses in the country. And they probably, Illinois probably has the top player, to me, the best player in the country, and Terrence Shannon Jr. Uh, he's averaging nearly 24 points a game, which is the most for an Illinois player since the seventies. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was kind of tough too, for, uh, San Diego state to have to travel all the way from California to what Boston they were playing. Oh yeah, Connecticut that's right. Connecticut ride their bike to the game if they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously a home court advantage, I think, but, uh, yeah, it's, Right now, it looks like it's a one-team show, but you never know. That's week to week. You have that clunker game, and you're out the door. So, what uh, you're uh, down in Hutchinson, Kansas, uh, getting ready for the JUCO National Championship. When does that take place? Where can people find that? Um, yeah, the game. They they they're trying something new this year. From the semifinals last night, they're taking today off to give the teams a day of rest because some of these teams have played four games in four days. And um, so Triton out of Illinois will play Barton in the final. And it'll be 1 o'clock Central Time, 2 o'clock Eastern, and it's on uh, ESPNU. Looking forward to it. Kyle, I cannot thank you enough. It has been an absolute honor and a pleasure to have you here. I can't thank you enough for taking the time to do this. I know you're busy getting prepped uh, for what you have to do. And, man, I, I, I love to be able to do this again sometime. It's just a joy talking to you and, and, and bringing all this – this, these great basketball memories up. Uh, thanks. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you, sir. Former Mr. Basketball, former national champion, Pan Am gold medalist. Uh, he's done it all. Kyle Macy joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Brought to you by the Ugly Grouper down on Anna Marie Island, Florida. If you're ever down that way, Kyle, let me know, buddy. We'll get you taken care of. Right. Uh, you, I'm sure you got a place down in Florida somewhere. Everybody does. You know, uh, I, where's your fa- favorite spot in Florida? I just got one down in around Naples area. So. I knew it. <laughs> I was going to guess that. Why is every, I mean, that's, they should change the name of that to athlete central. It's warmer down there. That's why. <laughs> oh, I know that I'll be, but Naples is where, I mean, there are so many people that I know that are in their former athletes, uh, that they, that's where they live. Uh, Randy Whitman lives there. Um, Larry. it's just who else? Larry Bird, I, I don't know if you know him or not, but he's he played a little basketball. He he's got a place down there, I think. So I've heard of him, but I don't know him. I would love to uh, to meet him, but uh, uh, they did a that thing that they did on TBT with him and Isaiah and uh, 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 Reggie. That was awesome. I don't know if you saw that during the uh, All Star game. It was kind of funny because Isaiah said, uh, "You know, I still." don't think you should have fired me. You should have let me coach the team. I, we could have done something really special. Uh, and he's, I, and I forget how it came about because, well, I liked you. I just liked Rick more and talking about Rick Carlisle. Who he yeah. hired. But uh, Kyle, thank you so much, man. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Good talking to you. You as well. Kyle Macy here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. What an absolute blast that was. Man, what a super, super great guy. And uh, we've got more coming up as we uh, get you ready for tonight's NCAA basketball menu right after this. Brought to you by the Ugly Grouper on Anna Marie Island, Florida. When you're down that way, let them know that you hear it on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Back right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. 
That was a blast. <clears throat> yeah, it's funny when you see people that that you know them with hair. Um, Michael, um, oh, dad got it. Why am I drawing a blank? Um, gee whiz, Ball State coach. Uh, Lewis? Michael Lewis. You know, he's got the shaved head now and, you know, the famous picture of him yelling at night with a full head of hair. That was fun. Man, where's Casey? I don't know. Sometimes when he travels, he doesn't pop on and then lets me know later that he was – because they're in Detroit today. So, I mean, maybe he was traveling up or something. Who knows? But that's okay. We did talk I'm Purdue okay. earlier with – Yeah, but I wanted to talk Purdue with the with, Purdue guy. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. We have a lot of Purdue – we're starting to get more and more Purdue listeners that – We are. That do not like me, but – Um, man, that was just fun. Good. I'm glad that you thought it went well, because I agree. Oh, it was awesome. That'll be two good clips, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. one, you can tag towards. Lately, what I've been I'm doing like... with the long ones, like whenever I did. um, Well, you, that has got to have a mention of Bob Knight. Oh, of course. But what I've been doing is I've been fusing the clips or the fusing the double segments together to make it one interview. Which no, I, Justin, long... you did not miss it. Never Sorry, mind. go ahead. I'm listening. Good. I'm no, listening. Fine. It's good. No, no it's fine. It's you. honestly hard to explain, but it's fine. No, we haven't discussed Bryson Tucker yet, Justin. Um. All right, here we go. I guess Casey. No I'm one, guess Casey's not gonna I bet you no one remembers me saying the day before he committed that uh, Indiana feels very good about him. No, you, you did say that yesterday. Oh, I know. 0.9% APR financing for 36 months on a 2023 Honda Ridgeline. Go to AndyMoreHonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville and Evansville. Pizza, burgers, beer. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Hey, hey, welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Friday. We're in the midst of the NCAA basketball tournaments, men's and women's, as far as that goes. And Tonight, four more games on the docket on the men's side with Purdue taking on Gonzaga, who was playing in their ninth consecutive Sweet 16 game, trying to get to the Elite Eight. Um, Clemson knocking off, who they beat, North Carolina? Uh, to no, reach they their beat first, they or not, they beat Arizona. Excuse me, Arizona to reach their first elite eight in like forty three years or something like that. Um, UConn destroyed San Diego State. Illinois beats Iowa State. Number one offense gets the number one defense, and then Alabama. UNC had that game. I, I, that was a man. You want to talk about a tale of two halves? They were in complete control in that first half. And uh, Alabama fought through and uh, come back, came back and got the win. And then tonight, you've got Purdue against Gonzaga, like I said. The only outlier left in the tournament 
Number 11, North Carolina State, 11 seed, against number two, Marquette. Now, I'm not saying that they can't beat Marquette because I, I don't know how good Marquette really is. We, we shall see. They're not good enough, regardless, to go past the Elite Eight, in my opinion. But then you've got the two primetime games, the games that uh, Duke and Houston, that should be a, a, a fist fight. And then Creighton and Tennessee should be a, a good game. I, I would have probably reversed maybe Purdue and Creighton, the Creighton game. Um, but all four of them should be good. I, I, I can tell you one thing. I, I'm going to be shocked if you see anything like with the UConn game last night. When you get to this level, most everybody is, is, is on par. Then on the women's side, Indiana taking on, whew, I'd say the UConn of the women's side, but UConn has their own UConn. But South Carolina is the unequivocal num number one, overall number one seed on the women's side. And they are, they're damn good. They are really, really good. Don Staley, and they're very, very well coached with Don Staley. So, and the fear for me for the Indiana women's team is that is the, game that we saw last night with UConn because when Indiana has lost, which it has been very rarely this year, lost to Stanford, lost to Iowa, upset loss to, uh, well, they lost to Ohio State, I believe, but uh, upset loss to Illinois, which was a shocker. But they, when they get beat, they get beat badly. Uh, even Illinois, which was an upset, I think beat them by like 20. Stanford, Iowa beat them by like 30. And even though Indiana came back to beat Iowa at home, I, I can't understand a team that's as good as Indiana is and and very balanced got beat so badly in those losses. Because this is the best team they will have played this season without question. And Iowa and Stanford are both very, very, very good. Still uh, still rolling in the tournament tonight. We hope to have Casey Bartley with us. Boiler upload, I, I, I guess he's traveling and uh, could not join us. J.D. Campbell is going to join us next. And we're going to talk about the NCAA. John, talk about your parlay last night, brother. Yeah, it was just a two-legger. But I had Illinois money line and UConn minus 11 and a half and – Thankfully, the UConn minus an 11 and a half hit very easily. And uh, Illinois was a little more of a sweat, but you know what? They got it done. So nice little hit for, for myself, the, the local degenerate, as I have as I proclaimed myself yesterday as a joke, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, it's just... We got another two-legger tonight if we want to... If people want to ride along for a second parlay of the sweet 16. Give I'm it to me, baby. Give it to me. I, 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 I'll throw $10 on something, 20 bucks. I've on got something. Houston minus three and a half against Duke. And then I've got Creighton money line because they're underdogs against Tennessee. I think they'll win. Okay. Outright, but so. so, but what's that going to pay if you're taking a damn. Uh, I, I think I threw about five bucks on this one and I, I can't think the payout's close to 20 something. So it's not a big, not a big oh, cash out, but when you put well, a parlay, so two separate bets so, didn't pay much. So 20 but, bucks would get you 80 or close to 90. Yeah, because you're you're parlaying the two together, and Houston needs to cover well, the spread. I know. They're favored. And then uh, Creighton's underdogs against Tennessee, so I'm just taking them money line to win outright I, instead of cover the I just didn't spread. think that it would uh, – I didn't think that it would pay that well, but obviously that's not true. So yeah. good for you. Hey, uh, Indiana lands their first commitment of the 2024 class. That happened after we got off the air yesterday, right? Uh, yeah, that, that happened. Yeah, it was it was in the afternoon yesterday. Well, we'll talk about that when we come back. We're going to go ahead and take another break. And uh, 
J.D. Campbell, you know him as the former media director of media relations for Indiana men's basketball. He held that position at other schools as well and uh, is in semi-retirement, but we saw him working up at the NCAA site in Indianapolis, so still very, very, very much involved in the game. And there is so much to talk about. Uh, the NCAA wants to ban prop bets. Uh, there are continued NIL uh, things to talk about and uh, lots, lots more. Transfers, uh, they're off the table now. It's just like go wherever you want, how often as you want. So it's definitely the wild, wild west. We'll talk about it with J.D. Campbell when we come back. Brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Great place to catch a game. They've got over 50 TVs in that place and food that's made fresh every day. Block back right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. In the market. Dang it. Hey, JD, how you doing? You got the Braves on. Did they win yesterday? It's opening day today. In Philly. <laughs> Is today opening day? Well, no, yesterday was, but they got rained. I thought. Out, so it started. Oh. Uh oh, gotcha. I know the Reds won, and we haven't talked a minute about baseball so we can hit, uh, we can hit upon that at the end too yeah i i forgot there's so much going on my gosh uh, the games last night i watched them all they were great yukon looks like a freaking yukon looks like the monster well uh, it, you know you got to do it six times and, and and i don't care who you are it, you know again there have been a few teams yukon last year being one of them that just kind of rolled through the tournament, but usually most champions um, get tested. I, you know, the team, obviously the team that, that I'm most, um, you know, that I remember the most was my UNLV rebels getting tested by ball state. I don't know if you remember that game. It was really, really close um, back in 90. So I think yeah. Illinois will test UConn this weekend. I don't think Illinois will beat them, but I think it'll be a lot closer than the other yeah, games. Illinois, Illinois looks like they just don't care. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're just going to kick your butt. And, and that's what, that's how UConn plays, too. No, I know. But, I mean, yeah, you, you look at Illinois, man, they're playing with as much confidence and no doubt in their abilities. And um, they're – they're just they're just getting after it, you know. Um, probably the game I was most surprised with was Clemson. Oh you yeah. Know, um, seeing as how they had you know difficult travel and um, Arizona being a West Coast school, but if you've watched Arizona all year, and I have because my boy Nate, you know, working there. Um, oh yeah, Nate. Nate wait. Waiters, I forgot, man. What yeah. a great and, and and you sit there and you you watch them and. Uh, uh, boy, they've had some games like that where you're thinking, like, "Whoa, gosh!" That you know, that they did. You know, they play great, and then they're every third game or whatever. Maybe they they don't play as great, so they didn't make shots. I'm gonna grab a drink real quick. I'll be right back. Perfect. I should have done that a long time ago. You should have done what a long time ago? Grab something to drink. Right, you got 30 seconds if you want to hop up real quick. Nah, I'm looking stuff up right now. Okay. Shop for high quality meats, bakery items, and now fresh seafood. Shop Shop Market and Table has the largest selection of in-house made products around and everything you need to make a gourmet Dang meal it. at home. Or pick out a tomahawk steak or a grouper filet and enjoy it cooked to perfection in Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, everybody, on this Friday. And uh, this is uh, a, a, just one of the great weekends in sports. Last weekend, of course, incredible. But man, you get some really, really good NCAA games as uh, you start to weed out. Some of the teams and the uh, the cream starts to rise to the top. JD, something uh, I hate to call it breaking, but former Indiana guard CJ Gunn headed to DePaul 
to play for Chris Holtman. Uh, so staying kind of in the Big Ten family, so to speak, as uh, Chris Holtman was let go at, at at Ohio State. And then how about that run that Diebler went on with them after taking over as an interim role, uh, which sometimes you expect a bump, emotional bump, uh, as they rally. But, man, they they rolled. Well, you know, I thought Ohio State, you know, Chris Holtman, I thought, you know, did did a great job uh, succeeding Thad Mata. You know, Thad was a standard that was so so good uh, for many years. Took him to the NCAA championship game, and and his health, you know, I think really held him back at the time. And Chris came in and and put together a group that was contending for Big Ten championships, and um, you know, and then the last couple of years they had stretches where, uh, you know, it went south really bad. But then you look at last year at the the uh, Big Ten tournament, they ran right through all the way to the semifinals. And then they showed that, you know, kind of after a game or two after IU had come into Columbus and beaten them. And so, you know, I, I think it's a great hire for DePaul. Uh, I, CJ is an outstanding young man. I like his family very much. And, you know, this, as, as we'll get into, you know, maybe later on, uh, on the show, I mean, it, this is the new norm and, and, you know, I can best explain about why things are happening the way they're happening. And in the traditional sense of what we all feel about college athletics um, is now gone. And, and I don't see it ever coming back. And, and, um, you know, that's, that's, it's just, it's just evolving. That's what everybody's got to do is just evolve and understand this is the new norm. Yeah. Indiana's fan base is very, very vast, but it also has um, a, a very experienced fan base. If uh, that's the best word to use for, for a portion of it. And it's going to be very hard for them because going forward, you're, you're just not going to have, um, Anthony Leals and the Trey Galloways that they have right now. I don't know how much of that you're you're going to get to see again. It, it's going to. I said it earlier. It's going to go from that four year group down to a maximum of maybe two uh, two years, where either guys are here and gone to to go to the next level or transfer uh, or be one and done. But it's 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 going to be like a two year turnover instead of a four year turnover. Well, I, I, you know, I, the the best analogy that I can use in my mind uh, with college athletics, and and again, I, you know, I stayed away uh, for the most part uh, with Indiana this year. I just kind of watched and observed, and and kept in contact with a lot of people. Reminds me of two thousand seven, the year that I first got here, and the Big Ten Network started. And that was like the evil empire happening that all oh, these games are not going to be on channel four anymore. And this is the worst thing ever. And I can't believe this. And now we're seeing with what I call the uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse uh, <laughs> in, uh, in college athletics, four things that have happened since 2020 with COVID uh, with NIL um, with, uh, the transfer portal, um, and, and gambling, those four things, uh, that have been thrust upon college athletics, um, you know, continues to reshape, uh, the new normal. And, you know, that's why, you know, I came on to you just to give you a little insight on the the gambling aspect, because, uh, you know, I think Charlie Baker's doing a great job of trying to get ahead of the things. And maybe people can better understand uh, the challenges that you have uh, in collegiate athletics. And especially now with with uh, sports gambling being so pervasive as it is. Absolutely. It, uh, we've seen here in just the last couple of days, J.D., there uh, were a couple of instances uh, I, talk, I mentioned earlier about the prop bets that uh, the NCAA wants to see the prop bets be eliminated from college sports. There are a couple of states that have already outlawed them. 
And there was a, an instance in the NBA uh, that uh, one is being looked at. And I'm not saying that, that a player was doing anything nefarious, but there was a prop bet on a, I think it was a Memphis player on his, the over and under on made three point shots in a game. And he, he comes out early of the game. So it, it was the biggest prop bet hit of the day. Uh, I think there may have been something else involving college. Uh, but the thing that amazes me is how fast that they do catch a lot of these, J.D., but there's no way they could probably catch all of them with the, the diversity of available bets. Uh, the only thing I will tell you is one of the first job opportunities I had after I stepped down from my U, uh, I, I, you know, I've talked about it before. I grew up in Las Vegas and um, two of the most renowned guys uh, setting the lines. And I have one uh, who one of my high school teammates who does an integrity business with betting. And he had been employed by the Big Ten and he had been employed by the NCAA to help them look at the numbers. There's a reason why gambling makes money and they are all over everything. They know as much as anybody. They're they're brilliant in, in setting the lines and things like that. So they keep on top of it more than anything. And I think what you're talking about with the prop bets, and I didn't even know that this existed uh, this past summer. Uh, I visited the NCAA with my college sports communicators group, and we talked to some of the NCAA communication staff, and they oversee all the statistics. And their concern was that people were getting harassed um, based on somebody's number of rebounds, somebody's number of assists. Um, and I can tell you, you know, in my job, I always had a couple things that I, that I looked at and I was always, because of my experience, uh, in, in, in talking to, to people that did this for a living, you know, I always looked at the lines because, you know, throughout history from the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, you know, point spread scandals, uh, you know, throwing games, those are always things that you, you pray never happens to you. And I've never been anywhere near it, but it just, it, it was something I just wanted to, you know, monitor. Another thing that I did is at, at the time, we never allowed people like you to call parents. Um, and all parent conversation always had to go through us because anybody can pick up the phone and call you and, and be, be as sweet and as kind or whatever, and try to get inside information. And that's why, you know, we were so protective of our parents. And now that's kind of gone by the wayside a little bit with NIL because um, we are not in the middle of, of the dealings of the NIL world. And, and so, um, you know, I know when I first started as an SID, uh, at Bowling Green, I had a guy call me every Friday for about three, four weeks, realizing he was milking me for information on the team. And I thought he was just a loyal alum. So in these prop bets, there's a lot of different factors. And I think the main thing that they don't want to do is put any more pressure on the student athletes uh, individually. Uh, they know the team stuff, um, you know, with the nature of communication the way it is today. You know, people reach out and they get mad. They're angry. Sports betting is up more than it's ever been. And I think the NCAA just wants to protect the individual student athlete itself. Uh, before I forget, you know, it was on this date, J.D., uh, March 29th, 1976. Indiana defeats Michigan 86-68 to go undefeated and win a national championship for Bob Knight. So a uh, special day for Indiana fans uh, and all of those that are still around that were on that team. Great group of guys that I've met. Another special day is tonight at five o'clock. You got the IU women's team taking on oh, South yeah. Carolina. You know, Trace and I had an opportunity to share a car service with her, with Don Staley last year um, at the Wooden Awards driving to, to LAX. And she was a, a, a very nice, uh, nice person. We enjoyed our time with her. And, uh, boy, she's done a great job at South Carolina. And, and you know, IU's got their hands full. But Terry, you know, continues to be just remarkable 
her and her squad all the time. Uh, and congratulations to them and wish them the best of luck. Absolutely. We talked about that earlier. Uh, it's unfortunate for them to be in that bracket because the South Carolina, even though UConn's women's team is very, very good this year, but uh, South Carolina may be the UConn of uh, the women's side. They are unbelievable uh, well, as far as the talent. But didn't they get beat last year? They didn't get upset last year. It go. was shocking. And, and it, that's why it goes to show you, it can happen to anybody, of course. Yes. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, it happens for Indiana to uh, tonight as they'll take on the Gamecocks in that. Last night, four great games, J.D. UConn blasted South Dakota State. But uh, the other three, Clemson upsetting Arizona to go to their first Elite Eight in 40-something years. Illinois, a Big Ten team making again in, into the Elite Eight with a uh, – the number one offense versus number one defense, they get the win over Iowa State. And then Bama upsets North Carolina, uh, so to speak. But we're seeing a lot of chalk now as we're getting to this level. And I think that that's going to kind of be the case when we go forward. I'm not saying it's going to be down the line every year. But with these transfers, I, I think that a lot of these the teams that are really good are, are going to kind of stay good um, and – uh, get kind of back to the way it used to be, really, when North Carolina was at the top, Duke was at the top, all those teams, and Indiana, if hopefully they can rebuild and get back in there too. They're on their way. They get uh, a McDonald's All-American yesterday, and I think that will kind of open up the floodgates a little bit because they make the top five for a guard transfer from Washington, a point guard that they desperately need, and then, ironically, a few other guys – that are from Indiana that uh, have gone elsewhere, but could possibly come back home to play. Well, I, you know, the, the tra again, as we talk about the, the shifting of, of how things are in, in college basketball, I thought it was very interesting when you saw last night, um, you know, two guys that came into our arena a year ago, uh, Caleb Love and, and R.J. Davis from Carolina, wow. and they were preseason ranked number one. Both of them, Caleb went first to Michigan, then to Arizona, was Pac-12 player of the year. R.J. had a, a monster year. They combined to go 0 for 18 from three last night, those two guys in the in the four – Crypto.com center or whatever it is now that in, in Los Angeles. But to your point about the transfers, you know, I'm sitting there looking at the all Big Ten team a couple weeks ago. And I decided to look back just, you know, again, I'm not doing anything. I'm trying to study athletics and see where we are. 11 out of the 16 members of the all Big Ten team were transfers. And in 2012-13, the year that we won the Big Ten, uh, with Vic and Cody being first team, only one of the 15 players on that list were transfers. And so, again, that's that's the new normal. I saw a stat the other day with 46% uh, of the starters in the Sweet 16 were transfers. And so, you know, you, you figure out, you know, why is that? And you can point to NIL that people, you know, again, no one knows what schools are, are coming up with NIL-wise because usually, you know, the, the value of a scholarship and room and board and all that's all pretty equal across the board. That's all getting paid for. It's the NIL now that's kind of the separator in some regards. But the other factors that you've got to look into is, you know, when we had COVID, um, we gave, uh, you know, the NCAA, and, and again, there's not, they're not wrong decisions, decided to move forward playing that year with limited uh, fan attendance, but they were giving everyone who played that year an extra year of eligibility. And what that's done is, so instead of having four classes that you have to manage as a basketball coach, you got to manage five. And what you're seeing now is that experience as a 23, 24, 25 year old college basketball player is more valuable than the potential of an 18 or 19 year old. And I, I was trying to think about this, you know, when I knew, you know, when you and I talked last week and, and, and I'm like, I, I don't see right now in college basketball, a, a Zion 
or an Anthony Davis. Now, I may be wrong. I, again, I, I'm not saying I follow everything as well, but for the longest time, it was about the guys coming out and being one and done. Even Eric, Eric Gordon, you know, that was that was college basketball. And now it's like with the transfer portal and being able to transfer multiple times without having to sit out a year and the proliferation of the fact that the decision that you have to make as a recruit now includes, can I earn something life-changing financially? That it, it it's changed it. It's definitely changed it. And you're seeing that right now. I mean, Illinois, you know, how many of their great players, the only, the only guy that I think played against us in the Big Ten tournament two years ago would have been Hawkins. I think everybody else they've got that's that's playing big uh, came via the transfer portal. So, you know, everybody's got to look at it. And the sad thing to me is, is, is younger guys um, aren't getting the opportunity to develop in the fire. I think back to 2015, 16, when we won the big 10 championship, we go out to Maui and we didn't play well. Um, guys like OG and Juwan Morgan, OG didn't even play against UNLV. Juwan played a little bit, did not look comfortable, but yet down the road, James Blackman gets hurt. We have to play OG and Juwan in their spot and look how both of those kids turned out. I don't know if they would have gotten the same opportunity had they been under the same environment that you have in college basketball right now. And therefore, those kids, after a year or two, if they're not in the rotation, they end up leaving. Yeah, and that goes back to what I said earlier. Um, how much? A lot of these guys, how, how much of it, I wonder, are they playing that uh, that good old-fashioned play-for-your-school spirit and all that? That's really being watered down. Um how much that matters to the product. I, I think that there has to be uh, something there, but uh, that's more for the fans as long as they're able to do what they're supposed to do and win because winning cures everything. Yeah. Uh, and it also goes back to like the Indiana fans. I know that they want to, Bob Knight is not walking through that door. Calvert Chaney and those guys are not walking through that door and are going to be here for four years anymore. Those days are long gone. So they're going to have to accept this is the new normal. Uh, you're going to have a one and done or maybe two sometimes. And then you're going to have guys that are here for two years and then hit the road. Um, you may have a guy that's able to stay for three or four years for, for whatever reason, but the development is happening at, at Hofstra, at Brown, at, uh, you know, wherever, um, or, or even uh, Hillsborough College, for gosh sakes, for uh, Steph Curry Goki, who I think he was, a, he's a Division II transfer from, is it Hillsdale College, I believe? Is it Hillsdale? Well, Jim, here's the thing. You've got an added element. You know, you used to look at a school and you'd say, when you're being recruited as an athlete, okay, can I play there? Okay. Do they win? What kind of education uh, am I going to get when I'm done? And and virtually every male athlete I've ever known in any sport thinks that they're going to play professionally. So can I get can I go professionally? You know, after after playing there, playing for that coach, and now the element of financial gain kind of trumps it all. Because if you're from a situation where, you know, imagine this, Jim, you go to college and you come out of college and you got enough money to, to buy a house. You know, we used to always joke about guys with their cars. Yeah. But think about that. Think you, again, I don't know the money. I, I don't have any idea of the finances, but I, you know, what you hear people supposedly getting, you, you keep hearing about they're making a lot of money. So, the financial aspect, and from the coaching perspective, you have to play who's going to help you win right now. And right now, the coaches are playing 
veteran guys that maybe don't have NBA potential as much, but they're good on the college basketball floor. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it was a, a year, a couple of years ago, I, it might have been Wisconsin that had an average age older than the Chicago Bulls. It, you know, again, it's 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 where it is. I you know the other thing too is before NIL, even if guys wanted to come back and have eligibility, a lot of them just wanted to get out of college. They just want they didn't want to stay around. I ran to James Blackman at Yogi Ferrell's father's funeral. I said, James, man, you left a year on the table. I said, would you come back now if there was an IL? He goes, oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, so, <laughs> again, it's you, you, it's just what it is. You know, you just got to evolve. Just J.D., gotta- well, uh, we'll have to do this again next week, man, as uh, these games tonight get uh, uh, underway and taken care of, Indiana women as well. We'll have lots more to talk about and probably a lot more – uh, things outside of the actual games to talk about uh, as we continue to go forward. Looking forward to it. I'm going to be at the NIT and the women's BIT this week, working those two events over at Butler. So uh, it just gives me another perspective. It was great to be at the NCAA tournament last week and see the competition and then not have to worry about opening a locker room or getting a coach back to a press conference on time. What are the dates of the of the NIT? Um, the NIT is going to be Tuesday and Thursday, and that's going to include, um, let's see who's, who's in it, Georgia against Got Seton around. Hall, and I believe Utah and Indiana State. So a sea of yep. blue. I'll see you up there, my friend. All right. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to uh, being at Hinkle Fieldhouse and I thank you so much. All right. Oh, go Braves. Braves didn't get to play yesterday. So they play today as their opening day. We didn't get the chance to talk baseball. We'll do that next week as well. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. See you. A big thanks to everybody today. Bob Kravitz from BobKravitz.com, of course. Kyle Macy for joining us as well. Uh, Zach could not be with us. And uh, Casey Bartley is traveling. But J.D. Campbell, former media relations director for Indiana, and uh, still involved in basketball and so much more. Big thanks to John for keeping us between the white lines. Most importantly, each and every one of you, because uh, without you, we couldn't, uh, we'd have no reason to be here. We're back Monday to do this again, recapture everything that goes on. Until then, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio. Thanks for listening to Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for more clips and team coverage of Indiana basketball, football, and more. You can also find full episodes and tons of other content on thehoosier.com. We'll see you next time for another edition of Indiana Sports Beat Radio.